Hi guys, Carl and Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today I want to answer a question. A fellow said, gee Kirk, can you show any projects, uh, repairs with that drywall or fiberboard? I just happen to have a job right now. So they got fiberboard on here and fiberboard, uh, I got to give you the boring history of this guys. Uh, Fiberboard was created around 1950 because they used to have the line wire. They'd have the studs and then they'd put nails in it and they would put wire and go from stud to stud and stretch that wire so when you put paper it didn't all go into the field, the stud fields. But so they came up with fiberboards or gypsum boards. Gypsum is just uh, we used to and we still do. We use it by hand. You mix it up in a bag and you apply it. Well, they come up around 1950 where they put the gypsum in the machines and it makes sheetrock. So they, they come up with also, hey, put that gypsum board on the outside or whatever you want to call it, drywall, fiber board. It's a gypsum product and the outer skins are coated with different colors for, say, moisture or waterproof and things like that. Well, the gypsum board is great when you're putting it on, but if you have to repair something like this, it's a nightmare. So what I told the contractor here is um, go ahead and take it from stud to stud and you'll find that if you pass this stud here, it's uh, the board is, yeah, granted again, when you put it on, it serves its purpose where you don't lose so much mud, but to try to repair something, man, that's a nightmare. It's like, okay, so he put this window in and he's got a straight flash coming all around and everything. It looks pretty good, right? But if I take a, a hammer or my staples and put it into this gypsum board, drywall board, it just crushes it. In the old days, they used the nails with the corks, so it was careful not to break it. Anyhow, I'm going to do some work here. We're going to put, uh, he's got two layers here, but I like my own layers of paper. We're going to put two more layers on here. And because this window's caulked right here, I'm actually going to put a, a DuPont straight flash on here, which means, see, he's got caulking right here. And because it doesn't have a flange, this is what I prefer when I come to a window that's flangeless. Don't ever do that. You put this on it, and you go into the so-called key where the stucco goes. Get it real tight in there. Get your corner real tight. And then now you put it on here. This way, caulking's not protecting this, but an actual membrane. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and tuck some paper in here. And we'll show you how to do the wire. Because the wire, when I, when I nail this wire in, if I nail it in the field, um, I can rip this paper. Uh, sometimes I use these little nails that won't rip the paper, or I adjust my gun. So I'm going to put my nails right here and right here. And let this float, because it's easily damaged for you folks who say, Kirk. Can you explain something in a video with sheetrock as an exterior backing for stucco? It's not all that great, but it does save you some um, scratch mud between the studs originally. Try to repair it. Real drag. All right, guys, we're at the stage where we are tacking in. What I did is I adjusted this so that the staple doesn't go too far down because the last thing I want to do is puncture this already very soft um, sheet rock. We just put, it, I already stapled the majority of it. And by the way, guys, we got a lot of stuff going on here. And what is that stuff? Well, they put a stucco coat over a stucco coat. So we're technically going to do three coats. Carl is going to set that up and he's going to put it on fast motion so I could scratch it and explain what I did, brown it, explain it, and then float it. And if you look that way, uh, you turn that camera for a second. We are high up in the air. What does that mean? That means unless this is bulletproof, the rains are going to come down. And when the rains come down, we get 100 mile an hour winds and it whips it everywhere. So you got to know what you're doing when you're working way up high, especially with all these precautions and extra polyurethanes. There's polyurethanes under the window on top. It's just bulletproof. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do the scratch coat. And of course, I'm going to bring it out to this depth. So we're technically an inch and three quarters, inch and a half. So Carl's going to mount that and I'll show you the scratch coat in fast motion so I don't bore the shit out of you.
All right, guys, we got about an inch on it right now. And of course, where all the joints are, you really got to, when you're doing this, you got to push it in there tight. Use a lot of strength, skill, muscle, and add a little bit of uh, extra cement to get it to where to go in there. This is a fast set. It's not sold at Home Depot or Lowe's. This is Eisenwall, sold at the professional plastering yard such as Westside. But you can get a similar product, uh, Lowe's, it's called Rapid Set. But the Eisenwall, you gotta, you got to know what you're doing when you're using this stuff. Anyway, this is the first coat. I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat in fast motion after Lou mixes me up uh, another, uh, I'd say about another bucket and a half. I'll... I'll go again in fast motion and then I'll show you how to, I'll stop, explain it, and then I'll show you how we match this finish right here, which is actually pretty simple. So sand finish, uh, float finish, sand finish, same thing. All right, guys, Lou's going to mix up the last bucket. And as fast as you see me putting it on, that's how long I'm leaving it set. So how can we do an inch and a half this quick back to back, which uh, really the time it took to set the camera up is as fast as we did it. Eyes in wall. You have to have a certification or you used to have back in uh, when they first started selling this because there's a lot of stuff to this. Uh, under here, guys, when you do your work and it drops out because of studs, don't worry, it happens to all of us. Anyway, Lou's going to mix my last bucket. I'm going to skim this. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to take about a 15-minute break. 15 minutes is all we need, and this will be hard. All right, guys. Easy peasy, nothing to it. Uh, Lou just happened to mix the exact amount that I needed. What are the odds of that? It's like right on the money. So what we're going to do is take about a 15 minute break and then I'll show you how we float this. Not a hard rubber float, a green rubber float to expose this sand or aggregate. All right guys, change of plans. I said I'd show it in fast motion, but this material is getting so hard so fast. This dried quick because it's over concrete. So had no choice but to hit that. And because we're using such a fast set material, I'll just show you the ending. Okay, the what I'm doing is I'm taking the existing plaster and going into it. I'm taking the new stuff and going upward because I just put this on. So I'm going upward and then I'm floating into the existing. Now I have too much sand and grit into this sponge float so I'm getting it out. Normally I just touch the inside of the bucket because if you slam it here you'll cockeye this right here where it's not bent the proper way. So again right now I'm going to take it straight up right here to give my grounds what I want and when I have almost all of the water out of here then I'll do above the window now I don't want all the water from here to drip all over the place even though it's covered so I get most of it out and now I take the new and I feather into the existing why because if I pull down it could pull this out because it's just put on about 15 minutes ago and yeah this is a fast set stuck of one of the fastest sold anywhere uh, again uh, they don't even sell this to the public unless you go to the material yards like west side okay so there's that and now for getting this a little straighter you guys may have noticed sometimes i'll take my trowel on edge especially here because i was putting it an inch half an inch and a quarter a lot so I'll take it on edge, just like snowboarding, on edge. If I take it flat like this, I seal it, and I don't want to do that. I want to take it on edge because I want it to dry even faster than it's supposed to. So I'm taking it here, and I'm just filling a little bit here because it wasn't perfect. And this fella who I'm doing this job for, he said, Hey, Kirk, I hear, I read somewhere that you're one of the best guys out there. And so I don't want to let him down, especially since I wrote that. 
anyway we are gonna again finish this up it's kind of it may be tough for the camera to see this because this particular stucco is the same color as the wall damn near uh, or darn near this is like a light tan and this product we're using is a, a light tan okay let me get a little bit of water out all right so now that I got everything just about where I want it I'll take a brand new or clean float and go along the edges here so that way I clean the window and give it that quarter inch that all the rest of them have now I float back into here and again I'm trying to match this finish here if I use more water my finish will be heavier if I use less water it'll be finer so one of the things too is I want my new finish just to be slightly heavier than theirs anybody know why because when they paint theirs they're gonna soften it just a hair so if mine matches theirs right on the money then when they paint it paint it it'll soften just a hair so I got to get mine just a hair thicker which I've got okay down here we are really thick we're about uh, I guess an inch and a half two inches is different all over the place guys and we take it we float the edges in use the whole float see I'm using the whole float I'm not using the the toe or just the heel I'm using the whole float and what you don't see guys is as I'm doing this say like I go up I'm lifting this part up if I don't if I go flat I'll gouge it we don't want to do that so we do this we float it in circles I'm taking it right to where our other joint is and to take it here and then what I'm gonna do is take this plastic off I don't want to take the plastic off until we are done by the way the guy here said Kirk these are factory edges can you use a real gentle tape and I thought gentle tape okay we'll use an interior tape it's blue it's um, it shouldn't be a problem if it's just on for the half hour to 40 minutes it takes me to do this how it took long it took Lou longer to bring all the stuff down all those stairs for me to then for me to do this actual patch so since he's concerned about the um, paint on this window trim I used blue tape which you normally see me using my red vinyl because the red vinyl sticks better anyway guys that's how we do it we fix it all up and then we pull the tape and what is that word voila okay blam come on off of there now I say voila anyhow guys my name is Kirk Carl on the camera we thank you for watching and as usual see you guys on the next one once again folks we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments if you guys like this video please click the like button down below and also if you enjoy what we do subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you my name is Kirk and Jay we thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.